Yeah, running found me in fifth grade. My dad ran a marathon and I always just wanted to do whatever my dad did. I was part of a program at my elementary school called the Mileage Club. And every Friday during lunch recess, you could run a lap around the soccer field. Having a, a very supportive parent made me wanna, you know, eventually run a marathon. Whether at a competitive level or not, but it was always in the back of my mind by the time I was, you know, 12 years old that one day I wanted to run a marathon. And one of my best friends, he was in the opposite class, and so we became super competitive, right? Like he, he would go out guns a-blazing every Friday lunch recess, and I would get on his tail, and, and we'd try to see how many laps we could run. Him and I ended up running over 100 miles that year during Friday lunch recess, and that's when I found out, like, ah, oh, I'm pretty good at running. When I was a freshman in high school, I read an article about Clayton that was really cool. Um, they passed out these little magazines at the state meet, and there was one talking all about Clayton and all the great things he had done as an athlete and as a student at American Fork High School. And I was like, this guy's the man, like he seems to do it all. I then went on a mission and I came back and Connor was the guy. Like he was not only one of the best guys in the state, but one of the best guys in the, in the nation. And as I joined the BYU team, we were all talking about Connor Mance and how we could recruit him to come run for BYU. And my senior year, I finished the state championship um, for track and I see Clayton, he's running for BYU. I say, hey dude, like you just, you inspired me in high school and um, it was just kind of fun to meet, you know, somebody I looked up to and even though it was such a brief moment. Connor had a lot of options. He was, you know, like I said, dominant uh, on the national level. And so a lot of schools wanted, wanted Connor to run for him. And so I remember going to the state meet and watching Connor race and with the whole BYU team, you know, we all approach Connor and we're all trying to play it cool. Like, we're all like, hey, Connor, nice race. Like, we'd love to have you on the team, but like not being, we didn't want to be, you know, fangirling too much. But then he left on a mission, right? And he came back uh, in 2017, and that's when we first became teammates. Clayton was one of the team captains with another guy who just qualified for the Olympics. And so I came to BYU at a time when we had great leadership and some great athletes to kind of lead us, but also great mentors. Connor and I have a lot in common. We both are from small towns. We both ran a lot in high school and, and fell in love with running. We both then served missions right out of high school and served the Lord, and that was pretty special. We both have, you know, a high commitment to living the gospel and keeping each other accountable. I don't even understand their friendship all the way because I miss so much of it. <laughs> I don't run their pace. I am not there for all of their conversations. I don't get to see all of those reps that they do and all the cold runs and the hot runs and the time in the sauna, right? Like they are just together doing such extreme things so often, right? Like that just creates such a bond. We love to talk about the gospel in our personal settings, in our conversations on runs. We love engineering. We both were engineers at BYU and can nerd out and geek out, but we're also very different. I think Clayton does take it in a more engineering way where it's very mechanical. And I've realized that Connor has taken it a little more of an intuitive and almost artsy way in their strengths and benefits of both. On the bus ride to the start line in 2024, I was doing everything I could to stay present. And one of the things that I did is I just whipped out my phone and I just pulled up the talk by President Nelson about thinking celestial. And I started reading that because I was like, well, if there's one thing that I can do during this race, it's like, okay, what can I do to think celestial? And that kind of seems ambiguous, obscure, like how do you do that in the middle of a marathon? But I just knew that there was something beyond myself. But I, I feel like there were several moments throughout the race where I was able to think celestial and be literally guided to not only help myself get to the finish line, but to help others. You got six bottles in the Olympic Trials Marathon. At mile two, I go to grab my first one, which is arguably the most important one. I see him go to reach for his bottle and it flips around my finger and flies probably 15 yards to the other side of the road. And so then I see him turn over his right shoulder and he makes direct eye contact with me. So I went to him and asked if I could just drink whatever he wasn't going to drink. So I like, just drink as much as you need, but then anything you're just gonna throw away, like, can I have it? Connor was my biggest competitor. If I really didn't believe that it, both of us could make the team, then absolutely I should have just withheld my bottle from him. So I drink about half my bottle and then I give the other half to Connor. It meant a lot because those are the little things that help you during those last miles in the marathon. 
Clayton knew he'd be the best athlete that he could be if he had Connor at his side, not just on the start line in Paris, but every day until the start line in Paris. Like Connor brings something out in Clayton that Clayton knew he needed in order to show up as the best version of himself. I think that shines a light on like the strength that they draw from each other. We've run over 10,000 miles together. And that's, that's quite a bit of time. Let's say we're running seven minute miles and between walking, talking, lifting is probably even more. But like that's 70,000 minutes together of being awake and conscious and talking. And it, it's just really, really special to, to cross the finish line together. I don't know that there is a better partnership out there. And again, it really does boil down to your ego, you know, making sure that you don't get too wrapped up in the day-to-day, -day, you know, who's beating who in workout, or that you just realize that there is good that comes from working together. Running by yourself is really hard. And so it's, I think that these two have an advantage that the others don't. And so it's become almost a, a sacred kind of friendship. And you better believe that in the back of my mind that I have this, this dream, this goal to get a medal. Anything is possible, especially on a hot, humid, hilly course in Paris where it's gonna take not only the toughest mind and the toughest body, but also the one that's prepared the most. I'm excited to do that side by side with Connor. I know he has very much the same mentality and we are keeping each other accountable and motivating each other to reach that.